In this video, I'm going to be going over the four uranium stocks to keep an eye on in 2023. Those include Uranium Energy Corp, Energy Fuels, Centris Energy, and Chemical Corporation. There are now over 100 plus uranium stocks as I thought there would be when I started covering uranium back in 2020. Back then, there was only around 50 uranium stocks that publicly traded, but it must be noted that only a few can get into production with uranium and secure long-term contracting. And above everything else, make money. Remember, there are paid pumpers on YouTube and social media still getting paid to promote stocks, especially in the mining industry. Now, I've never been paid to promote any stock and I don't sell any trading courses. I've held many of these uranium stocks since early 2020, but I do frequently day and swing trade these because of the volatility, especially in the overall market. Now, these four uranium stocks, for the most part, have market caps in the billions of dollars or more and still are up 300 to even 600% since I started covering them in 2020. A couple of these hit 11-year highs two months ago, even with the overall market downturn. So remember, in no way is this video a cause for me telling anyone to buy or sell, and it's obviously not financial advice. I enjoy covering uranium stocks for the last few years, and I enjoy researching them for free. My goal is to be one of the top finance YouTube channels, so I hope you like the video, and please give it a like, share, and comment so that I know that you enjoy this content and I will keep making it. So we're gonna be jumping into the technical and fundamental analysis. We're gonna be going over these four, but I wanna show you on my chart here, it's gonna show the four uranium stocks we're talking about today, and I wanna show you their market cap, how visually, just really quickly, they perform compared to each other, the price, and see how it's actually really discounted in the last year compared to especially the overall market. They're still doing good, but they're at a heavy discount. So Uranium Energy Corp, this has a market cap close to a billion, and this is the visual of the chart here. The price today is about $3.42, and it is about 50%, 48% off the 52-week high. But it is still up 68.5% since Sprott Physical Uranium Trust listed last fall. And this year, we are still year-to-date down about 8% almost. Now, this stock has recently hit a 11-year high. So as you see on the chart here, it actually hit close to about 660. Now, the percentage gain since the stock listed was about 600%. And we're going to be going over this in a second. Now, the next one is LEU. Now, this stock actually hit about $88. So it's down almost 70% for the year. This stock will go into why that is and why it has a massive upside, obviously. It's still up 500% since March of 2020. And I covered all these stocks during that time. So they are still up even with the overall market downturn. And that is why I will continue to cover those. The next one is Uranium Producer Energy Fuels. And this one is also close to about a billion market cap compared to UEC. Now they trade very similar. This hit $11 plus not too long ago as well. And it's down 52%. We can see that it's still up close to 480% since those March 2020 lows. And then finally, Cameco, another uranium producer. It's got a very big market cap, second biggest uranium producer out there. You can see it's done very well. It actually hit that 11-year high as well back in April. So it is at a heavy discount at about 31% off those 52-week highs, which was recently back in April, but it's still up 258%. Another chart that I track here, all of these uranium stocks, I do give them a tier list ranking and this is by management, production time, media. We're talking about exploration, jurisdiction, cost, finance, value, the pounds that they have in millions. And then it gets a score for that. So with me covering this, this changes all the time. These numbers can change. Now, these four are ranking the highest. And that's another reason why I'm covering them. These can get into production a lot faster. They're obviously uranium producers. Now, this is a uranium enrichment company. Centris, they have some issues we're going to talk about with Russian uranium enrichment that they actually get this fuel. So it is actually the production time. They could have some issues. But overall, you can see these companies, they hold a lot of uranium, over a billion pounds with Cameco. Now we're talking about Centris. This is actually the fuel contracts they have over a billion dollars. So it automatically will get a six here. Now Energy Fields, about 128 million and UEC about 154 million, but they are actually getting more assets, which will be UEX is the company that they're going to be buying out in the next couple months. 
And this is actually going to be close to 255 million pounds that they're going to have, which is going to be massive for their company. I think the valuation is going to go up even higher. And right now with these valuations, I think it's very, very undervalued. And Centris Energy, the fourth one we're talking about, it's the most undervalued right now because we have seen it hit that $88 range. And right now it's about $27, hit about $80 plus. And this was last year, last September. And uranium is around that same price that it was. We're going to jump into the technicals and trust me, we're going to get deep into the brand new presentations for each of these companies, which is really nice. They have a lot of great information updated. Now these uranium stocks, because a lot of these producers, the ones we're covering, their charts are very similar. Every three to six months, we've usually seen the falling wedge in a downtrend pattern for these stocks. And this has been very, very explosive when it bounces off this trend line here. And this falling wedge in a downtrend you know, the, the overall market they've been yoked to as well as the energy market. So when oil's dropping, a lot of times this has been dropping, but we're getting close to bouncing off this again. I think that once fall comes and we see this, the nuclear power plants going down for refueling, we could see as they always do fall and spring, the fall, we could see this bounce off. And I think it could test some new highs here. Now, remember with my technical analysis, I only follow about 10 charts and uh, it's not always the same for each stock. Not every stock trades the same with volume. Everything is really different. If it was that easy, everyone could trade with technical analysis. Technical analysis, I like to marry it with the fundamentals and with catalysts. And every time you see these massive moves, we've seen big catalysts, okay? News catalysts. Now, like I said, every uranium stock doesn't trade exactly the same. And one of the biggest downturns we've seen was Centris Energy, and that is, and we're going to get into that, is because of the war in Russia and really how that uranium enrichment from Russia could be at risk that they have contracts to get. But we're going to talk about how there's upside for that as well. But overall, a lot of these uranium charts, they're looking very similar. That is that falling wedge and a downtrend. I really think that they're going to bounce off very soon, and we're probably going to see some big catalysts coming and there's a lot in the US. There's a lot of catalysts. So the first company that I want to cover is Uranium Energy Corp, ticker symbol UEC. Now this is the fastest growing 100% unhedged peer play uranium company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. They have got a lot of assets that they've been buying up. They've been doing really good. They bought all those Uranium One assets. Now they are also production ready, low cost, ISR, the insert recovery, mining the largest resource base of fully permitted ISR projects of any US-based producer. Their production profile is about 6.5 million pounds of U3 a year on permitted and installed capacity of their Wyoming and South Texas hub. They also have a strong balance sheet, 182 million cash and liquid assets and no debt. And this is my favorite, that they have 5 million pounds of U308 that's warehoused and this is at a $38 average. Now, when this uranium hits $200 a pound, this is worth over a billion dollars. Now, from 38 to 200, that's such a massive jump. But we're already seeing around $50 uranium prices. So they have a massive upside already with their investment at the $38 a pound. And this is already mined U308, which it's going to get harder and harder as inflation goes up to mine, get the permits, to really get this out of the ground. So that was a very smart move for UEC. Now, there is a lot of catalysts coming. We could see uranium added to the critical minerals list in the US. We see Biden $4.3 billion for uranium enrichment. We see the possibility of uranium imports being banned from Russia. And we see a lot of bipartisan support on this. So these catalysts are really going to rock uranium prices. And I think the US producers, these especially that I'm listing today are going to do the best in this. The last uranium bull market, if we account for inflation, these prices actually need were a lot higher here. And this $52 uranium price, it needs to go up a lot. We've seen a really good, healthy climb in the uranium price. And during the 1970s, uranium was over $225 adjusted for inflation today. 
And we saw those prices run in a few years time. I think the exact same thing's happening and to a possible bigger extent because we have more reactors demand and we have more reactors coming on. And UEC also believes that exact same thing. So I like that, that the management is very proactive in getting these assets and they have a big cash base. When they got those Uranium One assets, it, it's a very big deal, okay? This is massive, massive deal. And now they're trying to get the UEX assets. Now, that company, I've always covered that company in the past couple of years and thought that their assets were very good. It was just the management that had a lot of issues. When I contacted the company, as well as my buddy who owns 2% of the company, Lewis Morgan, he contacted them. They really didn't even get back to us. So that was a big red flag. Now, I really like the fact that in the next month or so, UEC is going to get those assets for a very, very good price. And they also got the Uranium One assets. The Uranium One assets were about 100,000 acres in Wyoming, which is the best place really in the U.S. for mining. Now, they have these permits, which a lot of uranium companies do not have permits, let alone the prices with inflation going up. It's going to be hard for a lot of these other companies to get into production, let alone get their permits. So it is very nice that they have Texas and Wyoming, that they have these projects. So it's, it's going to be really nice when uranium prices get a lot higher when they get into production. So in a lot of presentations out there, a lot of developers and especially explorers will like to say how they can get their assets into production and how they're a low cost you know, possible producer in the future. Now, UEC really is, and that's what's great about them, especially with their ISR, the instant recovery. It's it's going to be a lot cheaper than mining the conventional way with a pit mine. And UEC's physical uranium portfolio, as I said earlier, this 5 million pounds of housed uranium that they bought back, that's stored. It's also going to be very good when the company needs to get into production if they need to raise any money. Having that is a big, big plus. And also to get long-term contracts, when they start contracting, they can use that those pounds already that they have, these low-cost pounds that they got $38 to possibly start a lot of these contracts with utilities. And utilities probably will like that. Just looking at it at a glance, their shares outstanding, only about $286 million. Their average daily volume is close to about $16 million. And they have a big top shareholder base. So obviously BlackRock, Vanguard, these are big companies, Fidelity, and you know, we've seen Sprott, we've seen Global X Management. They're usually, you know, really when whenever we see a downturn like this in uranium, we see them usually buying back pretty heavily. And I think that's why these stocks can do 100 percent runs very quickly. And we've seen them do that, you know, 50% drops and then do a quick 100 percent run very quickly. Now, fully diluted, it's only about 300 million. Now, their market cap, as I said earlier, is close to 900 million as of right now. I think that we're going to see that number get up very quickly. And there are analysts covering it. Obviously, I've been covering it for a couple of years. I was buying the stock, I think, back in the under 50 cents when March of 2020 happened. And over time, I got rid of the stock. The management, we weren't quite yet in a bull market. The management really proved themselves. A lot of uranium charts will say this, 840 years of combined experience. Now, sometimes I'll just roll my eyes at that. But I really do like a lot of their team, especially Scott. He is the president of the Uranium Producers of America. And he really, when Congress asked him, he really laid it out on the line and let them know that, hey, we need to have a new uranium renaissance in America. So uh, Emir as well, very good at getting the word out there. We could go over for days their assets, especially when they get UEX. But the fact is they're going to have a lot of production, including their 2 million pounds of physical capacity at their Hobson fully licensed and permitted plant, which, you know, not a lot of companies are going to be able to do this. I'm letting you guys know it's going to be really tough. We look at the previous uranium bull market and there was only really one company coming up from an explorer to a producer, and that was Paladin. And they had issues at the peak uranium price, and they had to go into the spot market to buy those pounds. So this is, uh, this is something that I really find interesting, that we're at this point already, and the, the, still the stock price is very low, yet they have all these assets. I think it's very undervalued. So all of the uranium producers will probably cover this. But the 2022 demand is 205 million pounds. The production that's expected is 134 million. So the U.S. pretty much produced no uranium. 
And, you know, the thing is, when all this production comes back into America, we've got this new uranium renaissance starting in America. The valuations of these companies are going to be a lot higher. You've seen earlier I showed you Cameco, what it is. Now, these companies are not going to say they're going to grow into that overnight, but it is very possible because the demand for uranium is going up like crazy. The production gap, they're saying, is about 71 million pounds. I think it's actually going to be a lot higher when these new reactors that are coming up all the time. There's 53 under construction, okay? 440 reactors worldwide. 64 new reactors have been connected since 2013. And we're really seeing a massive push in China. 150 new reactors coming up. And they can get these reactors up in about four to five years. And a lot of these already started, you know, construction. 53 of these started back, you know, not too long ago. And Japan is another one they can get up these reactors in less than about five years, four to five years. And this is going to be a big demand. And they're also restarting a lot of these reactors that they went down during Fukushima. So the demand's going to be outstanding. Nuclear power in the US, 93 reactors, it's 20% of the US base load power. So it is very, very important. And it is a critical mineral. So we think that I really believe that uranium is going to be out of this critical minerals list. So this Biden administration that wants the $4.3 billion to allow DOE to purchase domestic uranium conversion and enrichment, I think this is going to, you know, we're not even going to be talking right yet about the political instability in the world with Russia and Kazakhstan. But just the fact that the U.S. wants to spend this amount of money and really getting that uranium renaissance going they're going to be looking at UEC, Energy Fields, these companies that I'm talking about today, and Centris Energy and Cameco. Another thing that we got to talk about are these small modular reactors. Now, I don't invest in SMR companies because there's just too many nuclear energy companies. It's too competitive out there. You know, there's 50 plus out there. I think it's actually close to 70 that are looking at least with applications for permitting and getting these patents for these new, even tiny reactors. But the thing is, they're going to need the HALU fuel for the most part, for the majority of these. They're gonna obviously need uranium, these advanced reactors. These are going to be coming up as well. And I think that this is really gonna be the future and the demand is gonna get crazy out there. Although we have the other type of reactors, the larger reactors, these small modular reactors are going to be a big part of the future demand and really, the supply is very limited in uranium enrichment out there. So if that U.S. comes back and they start to supply this HALU, the DOE is really the only one with Russia that can do this. We see companies like Centris Energy that I'm going to talk about. They're looking to produce HALU. They're really going to have a monopoly. So that stock, I think, is going to do very well if they can figure out this process. We'll talk about that in a little while. Now, one thing that is very important is this 700 million pounds of contracting is going to be coming back into the market. This long-term contracting, you can see here, this was the last uranium bull market. These big lines here, 250 million pounds. This was, this was massive, and this is what really ran the uranium prices up. That's going to be coming back. 1.3 billion pounds of contracted needed by 2035. There's about 700 million pounds that the biggest uranium producer in Kazakhstan, Kazatomprom, has said is going to be coming back into the market. And they put that out back at the end of 2020. So we're already starting to see this happen. So as of right now, you can see the resource summary here for UEC. There are just so many to cover. And, you know, just overall, I think that it, for 10 to 20 years, this company can grow massively in the next 10 to 20 years. And the amount of assets that they have, obviously, they're not going to get every single one of those up instantly. But when they get those UEX assets, it's going to be a lot of pounds. And they're going to be a powerhouse in the uranium industry. I really do like the company. I like the management. I like the chart. I like the technicals. I like how it trades. I love the volatility in it. I have day and swing traded it and done very well. I really do wish I still had those like 30 to 40 cent shares back in, I think it was close to 50 cents back in 2020 with the stock, obviously. But uh, I probably would be pulling my hair out because that stock went up to $6 and it's dropped almost 50%. So even having you know those shares back then would have been a 10X, You know it could drop 500% even with that 50% drop. It's a 500% drop if I would have kept it. So it would have been really, really rough and tough not to you know, want to sell it. So I did eventually sell early on, but I've been buying swing trading this stock and day trading it 
But I think right now at the prices and the catalyst we have coming, the price of uranium where it's at, this stock is going to be very good, you know, do very good in the future. Next stock we're going to talk about is Centris Energy. Now, this company I showed you has a massive pullback in the last pretty much since September to October. It's really at a big downturn. Now, the war in Russia is one of the big things that caused this. They're contracting that they have there in Russia to get this fuel. It could be at risk. Now, a lot of investors sold off. Now, this isn't 100%. Now this stock, like I said, close to $88 it hit last year and now it's about $27. They made close to $280 million last year. Right now the market cap for Centris Energy is $380 million and they made close to $280 million last year. So obviously it is massively undervalued, but it is a big risk if they can't get those that fuel from Russia. Overall, their leadership is very good. Dan, he actually was at the Department of Energy and this was big. He was the also chief operations officer, but being the deputy secretary of energy, as you can see, they, I like this, that they posted the headlines just in the last couple months, just have been outstanding for nuclear energy, for uranium. And it's pretty much right now, I think we're at this breaking point where we're going to see massive runs in uranium stocks very quickly. I think a lot of money is just sitting around looking to buy back into these. As of right now, Centris Energy relies on uranium enrichment and other capabilities necessary for production of advanced nuclear fuel to power existing and next generational reactors around the world. The Centris is the world's most diversified LEU supplier. So they've got a billion dollars order book into 2028. So there is the risk with their SWU from Russia, 10X, but they do have Arano, the French company, for their enrichment for these long-term contracts. Now, these contracts include fixed and discounted to the market price components, but when the prices go up, it is actually good, in a sense, for them if they have fixed contracts. So they're actually selling to these utility companies, so they can actually grow a lot more this way if they have these low price fixed contracting which they got at one of the lowest prices ever so that is very positive so the u.s government they supply obviously it's not just for nuclear power plants we're going to see halu there in space reactor demonstrations the small model reactors with halu as well their naval reactors this high enriched uranium the military micro reactors that's another one halu and then nuclear forces having that nuclear fuel is very very pertinent for the u.s national security and we're we're going to see this company grow i think as as the uranium bull market continues there's really no one else like them okay now this company is actually a descendant of the manhattan project which is really crazy and uh it's kind of crazy how cheap the stock is right now i still can't get over the market cap and how much money they bring in i know it is a risk but you know, I actually did buy this company about $4.50. So I sold way too early on this. I wish I could have got out at 80, but it is on my radar now. So as I said before, these small modular reactors, the competition is very big. Okay. All of these massive companies are producing small modular reactors. Now, majority of these use Halu. They will need it. So what's interesting about Halu is about 750 grams or three tablespoons of Halu can meet your electricity for your entire life. So it's really interesting how we're going to see Halu being used in these small modular reactors. And really, this company is the only one other than Russia and the Department of Energy. So it's got a big upside. So they are first of its kind, this NRC, they are licensed, this Halu production that they could do capacity. And that's at the Pinkerton, Ohio plant there with the Department of Energy. They do have an NRC license amendment approved for the first NRC licensed Halu production facility. And this production can be scaled up in a modular fashion as commercial and government demand for Halu grows, which it's going to be growing at record pace. So with the DOD projects, they're looking to possibly have as many as 130 reactors that's going to require a bunch of Halu. And a visual chart here, they have the NEI survey that shows the demand of Halu. It's it's going to be massive. You can see over here, this is this is gonna be in the future up to 2035, but this is metric tons of Halu per year. I think this number is gonna be a lot more. They're saying that this the contracting for this could be $1.4 billion a year. Now remember, this company is already bringing in with their LEU, bringing in close to 300 million. You add this and the market cap's only a couple hundred million right now. 
It's insane. $193 million cash. That was last year, the end of last year. They remove all the preferred shares at a discount. I really like that. They reduced the net pension liabilities 100 million last year and their long-term liability of 23 million as of December 31st. So it's not as much. I like that they reduce that. And they have approximately 186 million in tax NOL. Swoop market, the swoop price has gone up a lot more. Now this goes back to February. We've seen swoop prices at record highs, which is crazy. It's a lot higher now. And uh, the thing is, 10x supply contracts adjusted to reflect lower market cap prices based on their one-time 2018 market-related price reset. So they literally got in at the lowest price cost, okay? And this is very good for them because we're seeing record runs in uranium prices, okay? So this is very good for them. I really do hope that they can keep these contracts. Now, they, like I said, they also have contracts with France, but we'll see how this goes. This is the risk there because of the war with, you know, in Ukraine with Russia is a very risky, you know, play. And that is why it's at a discount. So they've had a 21% annual revenue growth. They've had almost a billion dollar order book. Their GNA costs down 10 million last versus five years ago. They increased their sales of volume for uranium enrichment 64%. Their annual gross profit growth was about 17%. Cash balance close to 200 million last year, into last year. 222% annual net income growth and 39.1 million in deferred tax assets. So this company, Centris Energy, is in very good shape financially, in my opinion. Those are some highlights. Most diversified enrichment uranium supplier to utilities in North America, Asia, and Europe. Stable growing industry dynamics with strong tailwinds. It's the only company with nuclear regulatory commission license for Halu. It's favorable cost position with long-term order books with a billion dollars by the end of the decade. World-class and proprietary technical engineering and manufacturing capabilities. An integrated domestic Halu fuel supplier for national security and commercial needs. Who else are you going to call? It's not very many. As I said before, this company has a long history. It really was a descendant and bred out of the Manhattan Project. And then that 60s through the 80s, the US government enrichment was very complex. We saw nuclear energy growing. And in the 1990s, the Soviet, they started taking nuclear weapons. They started to do these megaton to megawatt programs that really flooded the market in 1993 to 2013. And then now we're starting to see this new renaissance in uranium. Halu, small modular reactors, new reactors across the world. And this company for enrichment, they're going to be needed, especially in the US, because there's really no other company in the world like them. Next uranium producer company is Energy Fuels. And this company is very interesting because they are not just a producer of uranium, but it's going to be rare earth elements, vanadium, medical isotopes, and recycling. So they are very well diversified in this. And you can see in their chart, uh, one, one of the big things is they have zero debt, just like UEC. That's why these stocks are, are very big upside, in my opinion. They have $135 million of working capital. And that's $105 million cash and securities. And they have a large uranium and vanadium inventories. Now, they don't have the same amount as UEC, like 5 million pounds that they actually have in physical uranium. A lot of this uranium that they're talking about is actually in the ground that still needs to be pulled out or it's outside of the ground and needs to be refined. So they claim that they are the obviously number one in uranium, largest uranium producer since 2017. I think UEC is going to change that, especially when they get these UEX properties and assets. So they do have the White Mesa mill. It's the only uranium and vanadium mill in the US. 39 million pounds of uranium produced since 1980 and 54 million pounds of vanadium. They have the Pinion Plain Mine there in Arizona that's on standby. They also have the Alta Mesa ISR there in Texas, also on standby. And Nicholas Ranch there in Wyoming that's also on standby. Now, these are licensed and permitted, and it's going to be pretty nice to see these get back into production as well. So this is a nice chart. The baby blue one is Cameco. That's the next stock we're going to be talking about. These are uranium producers in America. This dark blue is energy fuels. They're the ones that we're talking about now. And then you can see the green one here is UEC. Now you can see how much these companies produced in the last since the last uranium bull market. At the peak, you can see Cameco's pretty much produced the most. But you can see in North America, there's pretty much nothing 
being produced here. Okay. So when all this production starts back up, these uranium stocks I'm talking about, they're going to have massive valuations, massive upside. A lot of money is going to be coming in. So if you compare the uranium producers out there, this is a nice little chart. Now their market caps are less now than when they put this out there, but they have about 135 million cash, zero debt along with UEC. The uranium inventories, this is wrong as well for UEC. It's uh, 5 million pounds of U308 that they have. Now they don't even have a million pounds, but they do have uranium, rare earths, vanadium that they do, medicalized topes and recycling. So they're the only one like it. So they are well diversified, but in the uranium bull market, are you going to be wanting the company to have all of these liabilities as well? or assets that they could sell off. We are seeing rare earth also being pushed right now. And I think that the future, having a diversified portfolio is, is fine with this company, but I do wanna see them really hit on just uranium in this uranium bull market. We compare energy fuels to other companies with far bigger market caps in the rare earth element area for producers. You can see that their market cap's actually about 857 million right now. Although energy fuels can't currently do RE separation, they are planned to do that. They can do the mixed RE concentrate production and the ore production they cannot do right now. So it is nice to see though, how they overall look with these other companies. The potential value for this RE is very big and I think it's going to really help them in the future. But because energy fuels has REs, medical isotopes, vanadium, they have a big hedge in the future with the way things are going in the economy and with inflation going up. But I really think that the uranium assets are what's really going to be valued. We've already seen the stock trade over $11, and the pullback recently is really nice to, to establish possibly a new long-term position. So the next stock is Chemical Corporation. This is the second largest uranium producer in the world. It really is the go-to stock for uranium. Now they do have long-term contracts. So the biggest thing is they have about 20 million pounds per year over the next five years. Now there have been people like Kevin Bambro that has said that they, he thinks that this stock could have some big issues because they signed possible too low contracts that they won't be able to meet those contracts in the future with rising record inflation. And if the spot market goes up, they, they can't possibly meet these and they might not be able to even get that amount of uranium that they contracted without having big issues. So we'll see the assets. They're tier one, low cost, high grade mines there in Canada. They do have some joint ventures in Kazakhstan as well. Those low, low end, low priced uranium. Obviously they're a long-term operator licensed and permitted. They're really the go-to company. They have significant reserves and resources. The supply curtailment, 115 million pounds since 2016 that they have still on the ground. Purchasing through the spot market was 56 million pounds. And this is where people say they could really hurt them if they rely a lot on purchasing in the spot market and spot uranium somehow goes up to $200 because of supply disruptions around the world that we're seeing could hurt them. Now, the inventory drawdown, it's about 20 million pounds in 2018. We look at the uranium price since January 2021. We were at $30 in the spot market. We've since hit, you know, 63 bucks, so 92%. And then since the term market of 2020, we've seen about a 40%. It's actually a lot. It's actually going up higher now. So this this uh, chart, I think, was not updated since about, what was it, March so we've actually seen it go a lot higher. Chemico's next phase, their growing contract portfolio, they have 70 million pounds in long-term contracting since the beginning of 2021 and about 185 million pounds since 2016. They remain aligned with market and contract portfolio. It needs to see further improvements. The uranium price needs to go up. By 2024, planned production of about 40% below production capacity at 100% basis and rewarding those who have supported our strategy and now it's a 50% increase to the 2022 dividend. Now, I usually don't like stocks that give a dividend. Uh, usually these stocks are limited in how much they can grow. I would rather the company take that money that they would give to a dividend to shareholders and put it back into the company. Heck, even buying cheap uranium back when it was $25, $30 in the spot market, buying millions and millions of pounds and really holding that off. I would rather that happen. So their tier one supply discipline continues. You can see that 
through the past couple years that in, and into the future, they're actually looking to not produce as much uranium as they could. They really need those higher prices. They're not flooding the market really like Kazakhstan with Kazan and Prom did. Cameco, the amount of uranium that they have, 464 million pounds. These are proven reserves. 447 million pounds. These are measured and indicated reserves. And then 154 million is inferred. But when inflation continues to go up, the prices to mine this could go up as well. So we're going to have to see higher uranium prices. So obviously Cameco is a go-to uranium company, uranium producer out there. I think that it's going to have good upside. We saw it back in April with UEC hit those 10, 11 year highs recently. So it's going to do very well, very strong, but I don't think it's necessarily going to have as big of upside as some of the other uranium producers that have a lot of room to grow and really have not secured these long-term contracts yet. Now, why I'm so bullish on uranium, there's some things recently to cover with uranium. So Kazakhstan, which is 2% of the world's oil and about 43% of the world's uranium production there in Kazakhstan, they really rely on Russia. Now, Russia is looking to use Kazakhstan's oil to really shut it off from Europe as pretty much a weapon. Now, I think the same thing's gonna happen with not only the Russian enrichment, but possibly the uranium that comes out of Kazakhstan that supplies 43% of the world. So this is very big news. We also have recently the HR8045. This will possibly make uranium a critical mineral. It is just an amendment, so it could actually move very, very fast. We have bipartisan support, seven recently, just in the last few days. So this is another big catalyst along with that $4.3 billion of money that Biden administration wants to give to the U.S. uranium enrichment. And we also could see uranium enrichment banned. The imports of it from the U.S. side or Russian side on the exports could be banned as well. So these are major catalysts. The other big thing that we got to talk about is this, what's called overfeeding. So this secondary supply, I'm going to show you on the chart here, the secondary supply, this was back in 2010. I made this chart. And this is 2022. So we're going to have this massive overfeeding happening. So they're going to be needing U308. Okay. Now all of this secondary supply, which was massive, you can see here back in 2010, is since gone. And a lot of this, some of this is Russian underfeeding tails and re-enrichment and others that is actually possibly not even going to be there because of Russia. Now Honeywell and Orano, they're going to be coming back and they're going to be probably buying a lot of uranium very soon as well. You can see the demand, 205 million pounds. This is Russia here. This is Russia. We're also seeing Kazadin problem, what I talked about. 43% of the world's uranium is at risk. And this green is Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. They bought up around 47 million pounds of uranium. All of this could be pretty much taken out. This could be taken off. This is going to be taken out of the market. Russia could be taken off. And we're seeing such a big demand, especially with the new reactors coming and the overfeeding happening. They're going to be coming back into the market. It's going to get really crazy probably very soon. We also have that 700 million pounds of contracting coming and all of that uranium out of Russia and Kazakhstan is at risk. Okay. Now some of that uranium in Kazakhstan is actually going to be going to China to for their 23,000 tons of uranium by 2026 that they want, that they're wanting to secure, you know, they're, they're really looking into the future. So with that demand coming, the supply issues, we're going to probably see demand in uranium go up to record highs and supply go down to record lows very, very soon. So the price of uranium should go up. So if we look at the price of uranium here in conclusion, we look at the price every time we've seen this fuel cycle start in fall and spring, we've seen a big run in uranium prices. We're, you know, around 47, 48 bucks right now. It's recently hit that high of about $64 back in that, that spring refueling cycle in America when those nuclear reactors go down and they are refueling. Sometimes they come back into the spot market. We see producers do the same. But we're going to see all that overfeeding start up very soon. We're going to see this fall recycle, this refueling cycle start. And I think in the mid 50s, if we see that by September, October, we can see a breakout to new highs. I think it looks very, very healthy on the price of uranium. So I'm not worried at all. I think the overall market is still kind of holding back uranium slightly. 
We'll see how that goes, the overall energy market. Hopefully you guys liked this video and enjoyed my coverage of these top four uranium stocks, these uranium producers. I've been covering them for multiple years and in no ways am I telling anyone to buy this. If you guys enjoy these, please hit the like and subscribe button below and until next time.